Let's have a look at how to build topology in ArcMap 10.1. So this is a very simple scenario. You've got a couple of shapes, polygons here, that have uh, an overlap between them. In this case, hypothetically, let's say they're parks or they could be different types of land use. And in this case, we don't want to have overlaps between the two of them. The two polygons are meant to be mutually exclusive, i.e. no overlap. So the first thing that we have to note here is that if in my file geo database over here in the catalog pane, I've got uh, demo is the name of my geo database, and within that I have a featured data set called land use. And it's important that you have a featured data set in order to be able to create topology inside it. Um, the main reason really I think is that it enforces the idea that you have to have uh, the same coordinate system for all of the feature classes inside that feature data set, which is a requirement for building topology. So it's really easy to do. If you need to, to create it, just right click on your geodatabase and say um, new feature data set, and then you can bring uh, feature classes inside it or create your own as you go. So within that, I've got my parks feature class. Um, so in my feature data set, I'm going to just right click and select new topology. And there's a handy dandy little wizard here that explains how this all works. So we're going to create one, uh, click next, and it's going to use a name in this case, based on the name of the feature data set. So that's fine. And we can go with the, uh, default cluster tolerance as a rule. That's uh, a good place to start unless you have a reason to change it. Click next again, then you select the feature classes that will be involved in it. So you can, the great thing about topology in the geodatabase is that you can have topological rules that include more than one feature class. I'm just going to start with a simple one uh, just for my park. So I select that, click next, and here you can have a ranking for these. So if you have more than one feature class, it will decide which one is more important when making decisions about what features to keep or delete, that kind of thing. So again, we can leave that as the default for our demo. Click Next. And here's the fun part where we get to add the rules for our topology. So click the Add Rule button. And this is where you can get a list of the feature classes. Of course, I just have one and the rules for that. So in this case, by default, it's must not overlap. It's probably the most commonly used one. But there are other ones available, things like must not have gaps. Uh, must be covered by a feature class of lots of different things to work with here. So let's just go with our default must not overlap. Uh, we have the box check to say show errors. We'll click OK. Let's click next. So now we have a rule there that's listed for my parks feature class. It has a rule must not overlap. Click next. That gives us a summary and then we'll click finish. So it's now generating this new topology for the feature classes that I listed. Of course, this is pretty straightforward, but even so, it can take um, a few seconds or longer to, to generate this new topology. So it's been created. It asks me if I would like to validate it. I'll say yes. And so now it's actually checking the polygons for um, any places where the rule that I've specified, whether that's been uh, violated in some way. So you'll notice that in the feature data set under land use, I now have a new uh, thing <laughs> that's listed there, which is the land use topology. So it's separate from a feature class. It's a, it's a different thing, different object in ArcMap. So I can click to add that to my map. And uh, you, it asked me if I want to ask, add the ones that are participating. Um, I'm going to say no, because I've already got it on there. And now we've got this as uh, it's commonly referred to as like a spell checker for your map is it's highlighting the part of the map where the rule that I specified is being violated. So it's a fantastic tool and of course you'd ha you could have much more uh, elaborate sophisticated rules and more complex data sets but this gives you the general idea here. So now if I want to do something about this I can start editing, which is important in order to uh, be able to activate the topology toolbar, which by the way, if you need to add it, just do it as you would any other toolbar. And we can do things such as click on the error inspector, and that will give us a list of rules or uh, places that have uh, violated the rule. So if I say search now, I have one 
um, listing for the area that's that's uh, indicated graphically in the map, but it's also showing it in this table here to give us um, a listing of that. So under that, I can literally just right click and say something like subtract, merge, create feature. So if I wanted to create a new feature that's separate from those two, I could. In this case, maybe I'll just subtract one from the other. And so now I've actually removed that gap um, so that there's nothing in between those because really maybe it was just a, an overlap that wasn't supposed to be there. So you can decide which way you want to handle it. I could have merged it with, um, say, the polygon on the left. Uh, I could have created a separate feature. Uh, you can uh, experiment with those, but essentially that's it. So now if I say stop editing and save my edits, I've now corrected that. And so if I go in and uh, if I did go in and, and search for any topological errors, they shouldn't, there wouldn't be any there. And now I have a uh, topologically correct data set based on the rules that I specified. And there you go.